Ar Shalawa Makiyam, Wa Akwathiyam, Kahalayam, Wahatha Pa'avath La, Abanawa Yahawa, Baha Shem Shal, Malak Yahawa Shai, Baha Shem, Shalha, Vakakwadash, Lyra Lam Yam, Wa Arayam. All praises and the glory to our Father Yahawa. In the name of King Yahawashai, in the name of the Holy Spirit forever and always, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that we will. Much love to all you brothers all around the earth, out on the highways and bowers, out on the front lines of this spiritual war, helping seal the 144,000. Habayath Shaudawada, the house of David, and we pray to be part of that number. Yahweh Ratazah, Lord willing. Much love to the helpers and friends of the prophets, of the men and women that are going to be part of the 144,000 and the one third. And much love to the one third Israelites all around the earth, the great multitude that scatter amongst the heathen nations and even look just like the these other heathen nations where they have been scattered too and don't have the typical Israelite appearance but they still go back to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob the holy royal chosen sea line who the kingdom of heaven, salvation, the covenants, promises, blessings and everlasting life is only for and much love to the one third women and children that are gonna receive salvation through men of the Lord and this video is titled when we get raised up Stay the fuck out of our way. We don't give a fuck about you two-thirds. We don't give a fuck about you devils. And we don't give a fuck about you heathens. Yahweh Tazawa of the elect. When we get raised up, we are going to be very, very cold on that day. When it comes to everyone starving to death, we're not going to give a shit. When it comes to people asking for answers and want stability... Because everyone is going to see that we're stable. Because we're going to have the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And be cool-minded in that day. Nope, it's going to be too late. You see, everything's a damn joke now. Because judgment hasn't come on a mass level. But when all hell breaks loose, people are going to see that this word was true all along. And that the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And the elders on down. And the Akim on down. And the friends and helpers of the prophets were right all along. And let's begin in the book of Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel chapter 33 and 33, and it says, And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Yes, yeah, so people, people are starting to shut the fuck up now. And even Elder Malcolm was saying that in one of his recent videos. Uh, like, uh, like this, some scoffers, but the majority of scoffers have disappeared. A lot of them probably got put to death. A lot of them are shutting up. They ran out of steam. Because they see that everything that we're talking about is true. Yep. And the rest of this scoff is going to shut the fuck up. Everyone that thinks it's a joke. They want to laugh at the truth and make parody videos. They're all about to shut the fuck up very soon. For real. Yep. And guess what? Their laugh is going to turn into mourning. And we're going to get the last laugh. And this is Luke chapter 6 and 25. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Yeah, so these people are laughing now, but guess what? The men of the Lord will have the last laugh. Yeah, and we're going to laugh at all these stupid ass people. And even Yahweh Ba, Shem Yosha, and the angels are going to be laughing at them. Because their judgment and destruction is very near. And we can't wait to see it. And let's go to Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs, the first chapter. This is Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse in the openings of the gates. Yes, yeah, so the elders and apostles have been speaking for over 30 years. The elders on down have been speaking for over 10 years. And the brothers on down have been speaking for a couple of years, several years. And people think it's a joke. People want to be simple and stupid. Uh, people don't want to take warning. Uh, people don't want to come back to the nationality. They don't want the kingdom of heaven. They don't believe that Esau is the devil. So when Esau really shows his horns, when he declares mashallah, that's when they're going to really see that Esau is the devil then. But it's going to be too late then. And then that's when they're going to come running back to us, begging for answers, but it's going to be too late. And then that's when they're going to try to call in the names of Yahweh, Ba, Shem, Yoshai, but they're going to get no answer. And it's going to be funny. We're going to be laughing and Yahweh, Ba, Shem, Yoshai is going to be laughing. 
And it says, she cried in the cheap place of concourse in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge, yet two-thirds are retarded. It even says that in Isaiah the first chapter, how two-thirds are dumber than an ox and an ass, which are two retarded animals. Our people love being stupid. Our people, they think it's cool to be stupid. But when you're righteous and you're holy and you have knowledge, they make fun of that. That's why it says in Isaiah the fifth chapter, it says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Our people hate righteousness. Yep, and guess what? They're going to die in their wickedness. They're going to die very soon, like how Yahweh said in John the 8th chapter, Ye shall die in your sins. So they're going to die in their sins. And then it says, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have said at not all my counsel and with none of my reproof. Yes, yeah, so two-thirds don't want to hear this word. Two-thirds, they, they want to live it up in America. They want to continue getting gifts from their devil daddy Esau. They hate the truth. Two-thirds don't want the kingdom. Two-thirds are already in their queendom. Two-thirds want to continue prospering here. But America's about to be nuked to death and they're going to be burned up in it. And then it says, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. Yep, so Yahweh by Shem and is going to bring the, their worst fears upon them. Like how it says in Isaiah, their worst fears are going to come, come upon them. Starving to death, having to resort to cannibalism, seeing demons, see, seeing unknown beasts, being burned alive, tortured in, in FEMA camps, being kidnapped by psychopaths when these crazies get loose, and they're going to be up in some basement in a soundproof room on an operating table, all sedated off of drugs and being experimented on, there's some horrible deaths coming for two-thirds. Two-thirds are going to get it very bad. And these devils and heathens, they're all going to get it bad. And we can't wait. For real, two-thirds have been prospering in their wickedness for a very long time, and it's finally coming to an end. And it says, when your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then, th then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord Yahweh. Yes, yeah, so our people, they, they don't care about the word now, but when judgment comes, that's when they care. Like two-thirds, they don't want to get on the ark before the rain comes. They want to get on the ark when it begins raining. It don't work that way. You got to be ready so that way you don't have to get ready. Yeah, but two, two, like our people are full of shit. Everything's a damn joke until bodies start dropping like flies. And that's what's coming very soon. Yep, yeah, how about Shem Yashai is bringing mass death upon this place. Yep, and they're going to be caught up in it. Yahweh by Hashem and Shai is not going to hear their cries, their praise, or nothing. Now is the time to seek Yahweh by Hashem and Shai while the gates of mercy are still open, which those doors are closing. And this is Isaiah chapter 55 and 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord Yahweh while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Yes, yeah, so right now is the time to be seeking Yahweh by Hashem and Shai, like how it says in Baruch. Seek Yahweh ten times more. But our people want to seek Esau. They, they see Esau as, as God. But they're going to see that Esau is the devil. And now let's go to Proverbs. Yep, Yahweh by Shem is about to withdraw himself. Hold on, let me see. Oh, actually it's Isaiah. It's, it's in Isaiah, the one I want. This is um, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 45. And 15, verily thou art a power that hideth thyself, O Yahweh of Israel, the Savior. Yes, yeah, so Yahweh is about to hide himself. He's going to hide himself from two thirds. Yahweh by Shemesh is going to be covering the elect, which we pray that we're part of that, the 144,000 men and the one third women and children. But these two thirds devils and heathens, they're done for. And they have no hope in nothing. So they're going to be completely destroyed and devoured. And they deserve it. For real. 
Yeah, we've been at the bottom for way too damn long, getting scoffed at, people talking shit, taking all these L's. But now we're about to have the victory. And these people, we're going to see their destruction. They're going to be brought low. We're going to be raised up. And we're going to be laughing at them very soon. And they're going to be in a pitiful case, starving to death. While we have a bunch of food, while we have all of our pick of the beautiful women, when Isaiah 1 1 comes, brothers are going to have spiritual powers. There's going to be supernatural interference. The angels are going to be protecting us. So we're going to be all good when that time comes. We're going through a hell now, so that way we don't got to go through it later. So, and that's why even Elder Apostle Gabbard said, when Jacob's shovel comes, we don't got to be afraid of that. That's for these two-thirds devils and heathens. Jacob's trouble is two-thirds trouble. That's for them to suffer. We're going through our fire now. We're going through the, we're going through the symbolic fire. Two-thirds are going to get the literal fire. Yeah, so they're, they're going to get it way worse. Yep, and they're going to feel stupid when they see that we were the men of the Lord all along. They're going to see us shining like fine gold, and they're going to be ashamed. And now I'm going to go to Psalms. This is Psalms chapter 6. Hold on, let me wait for this ad to pass so I can get the music back. There we go. Hold on real quick. There we go. All right, so this is Psalms chapter 6, verse 9. Yahweh hath heard my supplication, and Yahweh will receive my prayer. Yes, yeah, so Yahweh by Hashem and Shah is answering our prayers. The blessings that we lift up upon the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and the elders on down, and the Akim on down, and the friends and helpers of the prophets, and the one third women and children. And he also hears the curses that we put up on these two thirds devils and heathens, and they're all being answered. So it says, Yahweh hath heard my supplication, and Yahweh will see my prayer. Let all mine enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. Yes, so everyone that came up against us, two-thirds of our own nation, and these devils and heathens, they're all going to be ashamed for coming up against us. They're, they're all about to see that we are the chosen. People want to treat us like shit now, but very soon they're going to be feeling very stupid. And this is John chapter 4 and 44. It says, For Yahushai himself testified, that a prophet hath no honor in his own country. Yeah, people don't honor the men of the Lord. People don't want to respect righteousness. Now, people want to look up to Tupac, Biggie, Nipsey Hussle. People want to look up to these faggots. They want to look up to these wicked ass men. Because our people love wickedness. Our people, they want nothing to do with Yahweh Bashem Yashai. So they're going to be destroyed and come back in the kingdom in their right mind through the loins of the 144,000 and come back to everlasting shame. And there was another one I want to get on shame. Oh yeah, that's the one I want. Let me go to Wisdom of Solomon. Yeah, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5 and 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him, who may and made no account of his labors. Yes, yeah, so we're being afflicted by Esau, we're being afflicted by these heathens, and we're being afflicted by two-thirds of our own people, two-thirds of our biggest enemies. And that's the way it's always been. Two-thirds had Yahushai killed, two-thirds had the apostles killed, two-thirds had the prophets killed and locked up, and it's going to happen again in this time. And l let me pause on Wisdom of Solomon 5, and let's go to Romans real quick. I believe Romans the 11th chapter. Romans chapter 11 and I'll begin at 2 Yahweh hath not cast away his people which he foreknew yeah and that proves that they're still a chosen people but when it comes to these churches they want to deal with replacement theology and teach that the covenant is open to everyone but no the hell it isn't and in, 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 the, in the Old Testament, you see the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the New Testament, you see the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Throughout the Bible, all you see is Israel, the Holy One of Israel, the God of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. From Genesis to Revelation, this book never had nothing to do with the heathens. But you have these dumbass Christians that say that the New Testament includes everyone. No, it doesn't. It says, Yahweh hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Wot ye not what the scripture saith of Elijah, how he maketh intercession to Yahweh against Israel? Yep, that's why it says Israel. 
saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. Yep. So it, it was always our own people. It was always our own people. They had the prophets persecuted, Yahweh persecuted, the apostles. Two thirds are our biggest enemies. That's why when our help breaks loose, they're going to be the first to die. Judgment's going to begin with two thirds. And then Yahweh by Hashem is going to get these devils and heathens. And let me go to First Peter. Yep, Yahweh by Hashem is going to do some spring cleaning on two thirds. First Peter chapter 4 and 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of Yahweh by Shem Yahshai? Yeah, so two thirds are going to get a first. Yeah, and we can't wait till two thirds are gone. That's going to be beautiful. All these bitches, hoes, thoughts, these sims, these beta male manjanas, these pukas and ray rays and tyrones. These 12 gauge mics, these bigums, all these niggas, we can't wait till they're fucking dead. And guess what? We're gonna have the pleasure to see it. We're gonna see them all being destroyed. That that's gonna be beautiful to see. We can't wait to see that. And we're gonna have front row seats. So wisdom of Solomon chapter five and one. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. And made no account of his labors. Yeah, so here it is. We're doing the work. But our, our people don't care about the kingdom of heaven. They don't care about having everlasting righteousness and being a superpower. And no longer having these curses upon us. And not being trodden down of our enemies. They don't care. As long as two-thirds got their blunts, their drinks, their hoes, social media, FaceTime, Snapchat... And World Star Hip Hop, they don't give a fuck about nothing. And then it says, When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear, and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all that they looked for. Yes, yeah, so two thirds, they're going to see us getting lifted up in those chariots. And they're going to be shitting themselves when those chariots come. When your house shot comes with the innumerable army. Of the holy angels they're gonna think that it's an alien invasion but little do they know it's their king returning and two-thirds are so deceived by Esau that since they think that it's gonna be an alien invasion they're gonna try fighting up against Yahushua and the angels when Yahushua returns yep and they're gonna get burnt to death in that nuclear fire and that chariot fire yep so we're going to be risen up before all of our enemies. They're all going to see our salvation. And they're going to feel stupid. They're going to feel like shit. They're going to feel ashamed. They're going to be like, damn, these were the men all along. These were the men of the Lord all along. And we were treating them like shit. Like, damn, I fired him. I called the police on him. I got him locked up. I persecuted him. Damn, and he was one of God's, Yah he was one of Yahweh Ba Hashem 144,000 men. Yeah, these people are going to be feeling really stupid. And it says, And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision, in a proverb of reproach. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. Yeah, people want to call us crazy. They think we're stupid. They think we're bums. They think that we're they, they think that we're getting nowhere by going on the highways and byways and doing these videos. But guess what? We're about to have the greatest reward ever. We're gonna be kings for eternity, being joint ears with the house shot for eternity, having all of our hush desires, having slaves, servants, handmaids, wives, concubines, unlimited children, unlimited everything, all the resources of the entire universe. We're gonna be the ultimate superstars and celebrities. These people are gonna see it. Yep, Yahweh Ba Hashem is the best employee ever. And this job that we're doing being prophets and friends and helpers of the prophets comes with the best benefits and the best paycheck ever. We have an unlimited vacation waiting for us called the kingdom of heaven. Yep, this is an eternal uh, retirement plan. Yep, and all these people, they're going to feel so retired when they see us get raised up. 
thinking I have a damn thing to say very soon. Yep, so when, when um, people want to seek us for answers, when our heart breaks loose, when can I have nothing to say to them? We're not going to give a fuck. We're, we're going to be very cold on that day. We're not going to care about baby starving, kids starving, women starving, men starving, our family trying to get mercy from us and be cool with us. Nope, it's going to be too late. Now's the time to be cool with us. You, you want to come running back to us kissing our ass then? Nah, it don't work that way. Nope. We don't give a fuck about none of you two-thirds. Yep, two-thirds are full of shit. Yep. Like, they don't want to hear the word now, but when that time comes, they're going to be begging us to read out of scriptures. They're going to come trying to find us. They're going to have a Bible in their hand, a notebook in one hand with all their highlighters, trying to learn and take notes and mark scriptures. It's going to be too late for all that. When all hell breaks loose, it ain't going to be no more time for talking. Yep, we're not going to give a fuck about none of these two-thirds devils and heathens. Not that we do already. But when that time comes, stay the fuck away from us. Because that's when everyone's going to want to be cool with us. Because right now, we're in the transition of power. And everyone's going to be bowing down to us, wanting to be nice. But, but people want to treat us like shit now and look at us like we're crazy. But we're going to see who's the stupid one when that time comes. And let's go to Ezekiel. Let me try Ezekiel chapter 7. I think that's what I want. Hold on. Nope, it ain't that. Hold on real quick. I think I might have passed it. Here we go. This is Ezekiel chapter 3 and 24. Then the Spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet and spake with, with me and said unto me, Go shut thyself within thine house. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shall not be to them our prover, for they are our rebellious house. Yes, so Yahweh by Shemeshai told Ezekiel not to speak the word anymore, and that time's coming for us as well. With this persecution and demonization increasing, very soon martial law is going to be declared. And you have America, which just attacked Iran. And not only can martial law be declared if something happens here in America, martial law can be declared if something happens overseas. So guess what? As this is escalating, martial law could very well come this year. And if it does, Yahweh right to Zah, Lord willing, it does. That's when everyone's going to want answers, but nope. We're going to be off the highways and byways. We're going to be chilling. We're going to have a bunch of food, spiritual powers, a bunch of beautiful women doing Isaiah 4 and 1, and we ain't going to give a fuck about nothing else. We're going to be in pure survival mode. And it ain't going to be no more time for talking. Nope, because the talking stage is about to be over with. Yep, the famine of the word is about to be in full effect. And this is Amos... Chapter 8 and 11. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of Yahweh by Hashem Yahshai. Yep, so not a famine of bread, not a famine of water, but of hearing the words of Yahweh by Hashem Yahshai. So a spiritual famine. And there's going to be a physical famine as well, where there ain't going to be no food or water. But the elect will have food, but nobody else will. And they're going to be eating out of garbage cans. They're going to be eating their own shit. They're going to drink their own piss. They're going to stick their finger in the back of their throat and vomit into a cup and drink their own puke. Women are going to be drinking their period blood. It's going to get very nasty when our heart breaks loose. You're going to have people running. And they're going to take off their shirt and wring off their shirt in a cup and drink their sweat. Yo, two-thirds are going to get very creative when our heart breaks loose. Yep, they're going to go in their cabinet and fucking drink white vinegar, drinking ketchup. They're going to be eating relish. T two thirds are going to get very creative. For real, two thirds ain't going to have their drugs in that day. And two thirds in that day, they're going to be making new drugs. They're going to they're gonna take a, um, they're going to take, what do you call those things? They're going to take a tube 
and suck all the gasoline out of their gas tank and inhale the fumes and get high off of it. You actually have two thirds that do that. Like, like I'm huffing. Like when you inhale chemicals, like paint huffing. Two thirds are so fucking retarded. But guess what? We like it that way because that, that means that we're going to get a good laugh when all hell breaks loose. It's going to get very nasty here in America. When all hell breaks loose, it's going to hit America the hardest. This is the most wickedest place. This place is the most violent place, so it's going to fall by violence. The plagues are going to tear this place apart. For real. It says, and they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of Yahweh, and shall not find it. Yes, yeah, so y'all ain't going to find us nowhere. There, there's going to be no more internet. You're not going to see us on the highways and byways. We're not even going to be at a house. We're going to be on the move and pilgriming. You ain't going to find us nowhere. And if you do happen to find us, we're not, we ain't going to say shit to you. We're not going to give a flying fuck about you. For real. It's, it's going to get very nasty very soon. For real. You how about shame and to put the humble all these idiots. They're about to be brought very low. And let's get that out of Isaiah, the second chapter. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 11. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of man shall be bowed down. And the Lord Yahweh alone shall be exalted in that day. Yes, yeah, so all these Babylonians are about to be humbled. They're all about to be brought extremely low. Yep, these devils going to be brought low. These heathens here, these bitches, these pukas and reves, all of them. You have no more social media. There ain't going to be no more cash app. No more of these goodies. No more bars. No more Grubhub. No more Uber Eats. No more nothing. This whole entire place is about to be shut down. There ain't going to be no more luxuries or nothing. These people are going to be losing their minds. No more cable. No more electricity. It's going to go back to the ancient world. And I, I'm really pissed off that North Korea didn't come through on their promise when they said that they were going to give America a quote-unquote Christmas gift. But hopefully they give another gift very soon. Because all, so something is going to happen. Because the, the, these countries ain't going to keep getting pushed around like this. With all these tariffs, attacks, and sanctions, the, they're going to snap very soon. Some, something big is going to happen very soon, and this could be the year. For real, and when it cut, when it does come, it's gonna come without warning. It's gonna happen so unexpectedly, and the only ones that are gonna be prepared for it are the men of the Lord. That's why the scriptures say, "Watch ye therefore, for ye you know not when ya, when the, your Lord doeth come." Yeah, so that's why we always gotta be watching, cause it's gonna happen out of nowhere. Yeah, so these two thirds gonna be brought low. They can have no food, no water. Best friends are going to turn into enemies. All these people going out to eat now, taking selfies together, going on vacations together, partying together. Very soon they're going to be killing each other over a piece of bread. Very soon they're going to be fighting over a can of, uh, they're going to be fighting over a can of beans. They're going to literally kill each other for the last piece of beef jerky. They're going to fight over the last Pop-Tart, the last Twinkie. It, it, it's going to get very violent and we're going to be laughing. Yeah, sometimes when scoffers come, sometimes they come in pairs and they'll scoff together. Guess what? Very soon they're going to be killing each other. So first they were scoffing and talking shit together and very soon they're going to be killing each other. They're going to fight over the last bottle of water and kill each other and then they're going to eat each other. And let's get that out of um, second Ezra's. Yes, yeah, so the, we're going to be laughing good when our hell breaks loose. That's why it says in Job, and hold on, let me, hold, let, let me get that on deck too. Because I, I don't want to forget that scripture. That's one of my favorite scriptures. Whenever I talk about the judgment of these dumbasses and these wicked people, I, I can never forget that scripture. So let me get that ready in Job, the fifth chapter. Yep, so how about Shemesh, he, he's, he's already avenging us, and he's going to avenge us some more. That's why, that's why we're seeing all these things take place. Nations withdrawn from America. America attacking Iran. And we don't give a damn about none of these heathens. But we're happy that they're destroying each other. 
Yep, you got Donald Trump attacking these Ishmaelites. I mean, no, the Slakia. Iran is um, Persia. So I'm um, Elamites, so called East Indians. Yep, and then they're gonna attack back. So all these heathens, they're all blessed with nuclear capabilities just so they can all destroy each other. And it's beautiful. So now let's go to 2nd Ezra chapter 6. And then after this, we'll go to Job. And this is 2nd Ezra chapter 6. And I'll begin at 22. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown, and full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. You have all the grocery stores, supermarkets, liquor stores, gun stores. People are going to run up in there when all hell breaks loose. They're going to be snatching up everything. There ain't going to be nothing left on shelves. Nothing. Everything's going to be gone. Yep, there's going to be food rights, race rights, class rights, all that. It's about to get real. It says, And the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies. And the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountain shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. Yeah, so not only is, is all the stores going to be empty, but there ain't going to be no more running water. No more faucet water. No more water coming out of bathroom tubs or bathroom shower heads. No more water coming out of garden hoses. All the water is going to be shut off. So these people are going to be dying of thirst, dying of starvation. And the only ones that are going to have food and drinks are the men of the Lord and the women and children under us. Yep, but it said that friends shall fight one against another like enemies. Yep, so guess what? Best friends are about to become worse enemies. And I actually have a song that says that too, and that's the spirit. Yep, best friends are going to become worse enemies. Yep, so you see these people, they, they look all cool now. They're laughing together, having fun. These people ain't friends. They think they're friends, but let's see how much friends they are. When Jacob's trouble comes in, there's no more food. And I was going to go to Job. I'm going to hold off on Job. I'm still going to get that, but let me go to Isaiah first. Let me go to Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65 and 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Yes, yeah, so two-thirds are going to be numbered to the sword. Two-thirds are going to be drafted off into World War III. They're going to die in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And the ones that are still remaining, when Yahushua comes back, they're going to be killed by the chariot fire. And if Yahweh Shai and the chariot fire don't get them, Yahweh Ba Shemeshai is gonna let his elect men get them. Yeah, because we're gonna get we're gonna get up in this too. Because very soon it's gonna be hunting season. And men are about to be blessed with spiritual powers. So guess what? We're about to have two thirds heads on silver platters. And these devils and heathens, when we get raised up. When Yahweh Ba Shemeshai gives us that green light. And it says Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be merry. We're going to have full stomachs. Our thirst is going to be quenched. We're going to have plenty of sweets, plenty of calorie-dense foods, plenty of nutrition, vitamins, minerals. We're going to have all of our favorite foods in that day. All your favorite dishes. When it comes to meats, grains, treats, anything sweet, anything, anything you want. Wine. 
smoothies, everything. Yahweh Bai Hashem Yashai, he's going to have us all hooked up when that time comes. That's why it says in 2nd Ezra, the second chapter, it says how we should have abundance. And let me get that real quick. Yep, and we're going to walk down the street eating food in that day. As two-thirds are taking their very last breaths, starving to death, all emaciated, looking like a skeleton, looking like Gandhi, and we ain't going to give them nothing. We're not going to care. They had a chance to get right and they blew it, and they want to talk shit and laugh at us. So guess what? Now they're going to get their punishment. There ain't no feeling bad for them. So this is Second Ezra chapter 2. And 28, that he, oops, let me begin at 27. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others, others are the two-thirds devils and heathens. Others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. Yes, yeah, so we're not going to be sorrowful. We're going through our sorrows now. We're in the house. What's that scripture, um, um, Ecclesiastes? Where it says better to go to the house of mourning than the house of feasting. Yeah, we're already in our mourning. But very soon we're going to be filled with laughter. And right now these two-thirds devils and heathens are laughing. But they're going to be filled with mourning and weeping. So it's going to be a switch around. It says the heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee, saith the Lord Yahweh. Yep, and two-thirds are also heathens. Two-thirds are heathens right now. Because they follow after the ways of the heathens. And guess what? People are going to envy us when they see us with substance. When they see us with a bunch of food, clean clothes. We're nice and healthy in that day while everyone else is struck with plagues and diseases and pestilences. While we have all the women. Two-thirds are going to want to rob us. These devils and heathens are going to want to mug us. These militia groups are going to want to rob us, but they won't be able to do shit because we're going to have spiritual powers and we're going to have the divine protection of Yahweh Ba Shem Yahushai and the holy angels and they're going to be able to do nothing. So we're going to be fully protected. We're going to be all set. So we don't got to worry about nothing. Yeah, so when you two-thirds get your judgment, we're not going to feel bad. We're not going to cry for you or nothing. For real. We can't wait till y'all get your judgment. And the elect don't got to worry about nothing because we're going to be protected, Yahweh Rakhtazawa, of that number. And this is Job chapter 5 and 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. And famine he shall redeem thee from death. Yeah, and we were just reading how we're going to have abundance and how we're going to eat and have drink, but others are going to be hungry and thirsty. So we're going to have plenty of food. So we don't got to worry about that. It says, and in war from the power of the sword. Yeah, so when it comes to the race wars, martial law, the nuclear missiles, shootouts, we don't got to worry about none of that. We're going to be spared from all of that. It says, thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. Yeah, so there's going to be destruction all around us. Martial law, mass death. Pestilences, unknown beasts, wild beast attacks, demons physically manifesting themselves. There's going to be all sorts of things going on. But guess what? We don't got to be afraid of destruction. Why? Because it ain't going to touch us. And then here, here's what else it says. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Yeah, so we're going to be laughing at destruction and famine. Yeah, so as people are being destroyed... Being rounded up in the FEMA camps, being shot in the head, being ran over by tanks, being eaten up by wild animals and having heart attacks because they're seeing demons. We're going to be laughing. We're not going to feel bad for them. We're going to be laughing our asses off. When Jacob's shovel comes, we're going to be laughing harder than we ever have laughed in our entire lives. Think of the funniest movie you've ever seen or think of the funniest person you ever met in your life. Where, like, have you ever met someone so funny that even you seeing them or you hearing them talk, they won't even be, they won't even be, slack you. They won't even be telling a joke or trying to be funny, but you, they still make you laugh. Yeah, when Jacob Shovel comes, we're going to be laughing harder than that. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. 
Yeah, so we're not going to be afraid of the animals. They're going to be cool with us. The animals are going to be protecting us. And it says it right here. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. Yeah, so we're going to have packs of wolves with us, bears chilling with us, dogs, mountain lions, lynxes, rhinos, gorillas, swarms of killer bees. They're going to be protecting us. So we don't got to worry about a damn thing. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and thou shalt visit thy habitation and shalt not sin. Yeah, so we're going to be in peace because we're going to have the holy angels looking out for us. Like how it says in our Psalms 34, the angel of the Lord Yahweh encampeth around them that fear him and delivereth them. Yeah, so we don't got to worry about none of this destruction. As long as we fear Yahweh by Hashem and we're going to be good. But these two-thirds devils and heathens, they don't fear Yahweh by Hashem Yashai. So guess what? They're going to be destroyed. Yep, and even if these devils and heathens did fear the Lord, they'd still be destroyed. Because salvation ain't for them anyways. For real. Yep, so we're going to have the pleasure of seeing all the wicked being destroyed. And let's get that in Psalms 91. He that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High, Yahweh, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord Yahweh, He is my refuge and my fortress, my power, and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. Talking about the nuclear missiles. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night nor for the owl that flies by day. Talking about the missus again. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be protected, because we're going to be in those chariots, seeing everyone be burned up by the nuclear missiles. And it says that in the very next verse. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Yes, yeah, so only with the eyes are we going to see it. Yes, yeah, so we're going to have the pleasure of seeing it. And that's going to be fun. We can't wait till that time comes. We're going to see all these devils, heathens, and two-thirds burning up. Yeah, they ain't going to be talking shit or scoffing then. And this is Jeremiah chapter 7 and 16. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Yes, yeah, so we don't lift up cries of praise for two-thirds. No, two-thirds don't even want to get right. Two-thirds, they don't even want to be saved them, their own damn selves. So why the hell should we worry about their salvation? They don't care about salvation. Two-thirds want to remain in wickedness, so let them die in wickedness. For real. And now, let's go to Psalms 110 and 3. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Yeah, so when we get that power, that's when everyone's going to want to be cool and listen. But by then, it's going to be too late. When that time comes, everyone is going to want to be under our protection. Not only women, there's going to be there's going to be these two-third Israelite men trying to be cool with us, trying to get under our protection. Yo, e even these heathens are going to try to get under our protection, but nope. Hell no. Everybody wants to talk shit and laugh and look down on the, on the Israelite man. Well, guess what? We're about to be raised up and looking down and laughing at everybody else. Everything is all about to turn around. And this is Isaiah chapter 13 and 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the gold wedge of Ophir. Yes, yeah, so the Israelite man is very precious. The Israelite man of the 144,000, the so-called Negro, Latino, Native American man of the 144,000 is very, very precious. And people are going to see that when our hell breaks loose. We're going to be stable-minded, have all the food, know all the answers, and everyone's going to gravitate to that, but we're going to do a whole lot of rejecting. We're going to be telling people, get the fuck out of our face. 
after all the shit talking and people do not want to listen. You try to tell your family the truth and they want to talk shit and laugh and call you crazy. Well, guess what? Very soon they're gonna be big. They're gonna be banging your door down. They're gonna be hitting up your email, blowing up your phone, hitting you up on Facebook, hitting you up on Instagram, trying to get the truth, want to learn, but nope, it's gonna be too late. Too fucking late. Isaiah chapter 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh by Hashem Yashai is his treasure. Yes, so we're gonna be stable minded. And people are gonna see us being stable minded. And they're going to want that stability because they're going to be bugging out. But they're not going to get it. They're going to see our shine. They're going to see our glow. They're going to know that we're the men of the Lord. Like how it says in um, 2 Ezra, the 16th chapter. It says, and then it shall be known who am I chosen. Yeah, so they're going to see it. There's going to be a clear distinction of who's a man of the Lord. There's going to be a clear distinction of who is a man of the Lord and who isn't. And everyone's going to shut the fuck up in that day. Everyone's going to want to be our best friend. But nope, too fucking late. And this is Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and 1. Who is as the wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. And the boldness of his face shall be changed. Yes, yeah, so wisdom makes a man's face to shine. So we have the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. We fear Yahweh by Hashem Yahshai. So we have a natural glow. We have a natural shine. We have the light that nobody else has. And when our hell breaks loose, everyone's going to gravitate to that. But we ain't going to give a fuck about you two-thirds and you devils and heathens. No, all we care about is the Akim, Akwathim, and Trojan of the 144,000 and one-third. Beginning with the elders and apostles of Great Millstone and all the way on down. Yeah, we're going to be laughing our asses off when Jacob Shovel comes. We're going to be chilling up in luxury bunkers with our wives. Drinking wine, burning incense. We're just going to be relaxing. And we're going to be hearing screams outside. Seeing people get killed. And we're going to be laughing our asses off. We're not going to feel bad. Yeah, and how about Shem is going to avenge us too. That spiritual power's on the way. And very soon we're going to be getting busy. Yeah, because right now we're fishing. And fishing season, talking season, is about to be over. And right now we have spiritual swords, a.k.a. these Bibles. Very soon we're going to have physical swords. So we can start doing sl so we can start slaying. And this is Jeremiah chapter 16 and 16. Behold, I will send for many fishes, saith the Lord Yahweh, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain, and from every hill, and from out of the holes of the rocks. Yes, yeah, so when we get raised up, and when we finally get that green light to get all that persecuted us, and that talk shit, and that want to put hell on us, there ain't going to be no place to run, no place to hide. When we get that spiritual power, ain't nothing going to work against us. No weapon that is formed against us will prosper. Ain't nothing going to work. Yeah, but you two-thirds about to get it. You two-thirds about to be put to death miserably and horribly. For real. These devils are going to be throwing you in FEMA camps. Raping your woman in front of you. Killing your children in front of you. Jacob Shovel's going to be very nasty. Jacob Shovel's going to be worse than a trans Atlantic slave trade. Way worse. Esau's about to show us horns now more than ever. And this is 2 Chronicles. This is 2 Chronicles chapter 36 and 15. And the Lord Yahweh of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending, because he had compassion on his people. And on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of Yahweh and despised his words and misused the prophets until the wrath of Yahweh by Hashem Yahshai arose against his people till there was no remedy. Yeah, so that's what happens when the prophets speak. People want to laugh, they think we're crazy. And then guess what? Once that judgment comes, that's when all the laughing and bullshit stops. Because people think everything's a damn joke. 
But guess what? The joke is on you because you're about to be destroyed. When you want to talk shit and flag videos and get videos and channels deleted, and you want to be an agent and scoff and talk shit and come up against the profits, guess what? You're mocking yourself for death, so you're already mocked for death. So you already have a nuclear missile waiting for you. You already have a FEMA camp waiting for you. You are already a future tenant of a concentration camp. Yep, and you're going to be all up in there. They're going to bust in your door at 3 in the morning while you're on the toilet taking a shit. They're going to drag you out the house while shit is still dripping out your ass. They're going to throw you in the back of a truck, put a pillowcase over your head so you ain't going to know where you're going. So if you try escaping, you're not going to know which direction to go. And you're going to be up in there getting tortured. They're going to separate you and your family. They're going to rape your wife in front of you, torture you. They're going to feed you slop, make you do slave labor. Yep, so you two-thirds are finished. Y'all are going to get it very bad. You two-thirds have no idea how bad you're going to get it. And, and that's why it's so worth it to go through all this hell now. Like how the scriptures say, when we are brought to a lower state, take it cheerfully. Because we're going through this house so we can be, have glory later. Two-thirds are having their fun now in wickedness, but they, they're about to go through the worst hell, the worst horrific things imaginable. Two-thirds, they're going to regret everything that they've done. That's why the scriptures say, in the day of adversity, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. Yeah, they're living good now. They have money. They have all these hoes. The, everything is going for them. But when all hell breaks loose, they're going to be catching so much hell. To where they ain't even going to remember all, all the good times that they had. It's going to be like it never even happened. Because they're going to be brought so low. Yep, they're going to suffer miserably. And they're going to die slow, hard, with deaths too. Y'all by Shem and Shahid is not letting two-thirds go out quickly. They're going to suffer and die miserably and slow. So when they get their judgment, they're not going to be wondering why, oh, why is this happening to me? What did I do? No, they're going to know why it's happening to them. They're going to remember the times they were scoffing and talking shit, flagging videos, laughing at the prophets. They're going to remember all that. So when they're getting tortured, when they're being burned up in nuclear missiles, they're going to be like, oh, that's why I'm getting fucked up. That's why I'm down like this, because I was laughing at the prophets. They were right all along. Yeah, so they're finished. Yeah, so like how this video is titled, when we get raised up, you two-thirds devils and heathens stay the fuck out our way. We're going to laugh at your destruction. We're going to have the last laugh. We're being raised up. Y'all are falling. And we can't wait. We're living in beautiful times. Oh, and let me get that scripture. Let me go to um, Sirach. Let me go to um, Sirach, the 10th chapter. Sirach chapter 10. Oops, my bad. Sirach 25. It's in that uh, Sirach 25. Sirach chapter 25, verse 7. There be nine things which I have judged in mine heart to be happy. And the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that hath joy of his children. And he that liveth to, to see the fall of his enemy. Yeah, so two-thirds are also our enemies, along with these devils and heathens. So, it's a blessing to live to see their destruction. And Yahweh right to Zawa of the elect, we're going we're gonna to get to see it. We're going to live to see the fall of our enemies, and that's going to be beautiful. Yeah, so we have the victory, we have the win, we're getting the last laugh. And we're going to see more judgment, more destruction upon these two-thirds devils and heathens. And we're going to be laughing. So just remember, when all hell breaks loose, we're going to have a sound mind. Yahweh by Hashem he blessed us with a sound mind. He didn't give us the spirit of fear, nothing like that. Nope. Yahweh by Hashem he gives us comfort. That's why this word is called the comforter. We have no need to be fearful. We have no need to be anxious and worry about how we're going to be delivered. We just got to know that we're going to be delivered. So this is um, 2 Timothy. Chapter 1 and 7. For Yahweh hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yeah, like there's a cool quote. I think I did a video on it too. But it says, never, there's a cool spiritual quote. It says, never in the Bible does it say to worry or to be anxious or to stress out. But the Bible constantly says to trust God. Yeah, so that's all we got to do. Now, it, it, sometimes we get caught up in the flesh. But we know that Yahweh Ba'ashem got us no matter what. No matter how things are looking currently, 
We know that Yahweh by Hashem got us. Like how that saying goes, not every storm comes to bring destruction. Some storms come to clear the path. The path to what? The kingdom of heaven. And very soon we're almost there. The kingdom of heaven is very close. For real. Our work is not in vain. We're being raised up. We're about to have all of our hearts desires, spiritual powers, women, everything we want. For real, that time is close. So we just got to keep pushing. And we're going to be there very shortly. We're going to see the, the fall of all of our enemies. We're going to see America be destroyed. We're going to see all these two-thirds devils and heathens be burned up. And everything's going to be all good. So I pray that all this was edifying, faith boosting, and spiritually uplifting. And with that, I want to say, Shalom and peace.